Hey guys, uh, in today's video I'm going to present to you probably the best or maybe just one of the best uh, training sessions, group rides here in Bogota. It's a 5.15 Tuesday morning and every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 5.20 a.m. at this intersection there's a bunch of people, just cyclists, you know, recreative cyclists, some pro cyclists, semi-pro cyclists, just anyone, me, um, doing La Vuelta a la Sabana, oh my god, we're leaving, bye. Well, that was a great intro, but when the group leaves, you just have to go with them, otherwise they're gone and you have no chance in reaching them. So yeah, today we were doing La Vuelta a la Sabana, which is... Um, like going around La Sabana of Bogota, which is an 80, 85 something um, kilometer tour all around Bogota, leaving here, as you can see, on the Autopista, which is the Autobahn or freeway uh, towards the north. It's early in the morning, it's pretty dark. Um, the group is leaving at 5.20, quite punctually actually, and heading towards the north in the dark. And then um, you can see we're quite a big group. I think this day we were about 40-something um, people, only guys and me. Um, doing this tour, I've only seen um, two other women so far. There are more that have done this, but not as regularly. But yeah, this day I was the only woman with yeah, support of 40-something guys. And yeah, you're heading towards the north, leaving Bogota. And then there is a toll station coming up. And you can see that here because... Many people are now all of a sudden like speeding up, pushing themselves more towards the front of the peloton because they all want to cross the toll station first because there you you have to pass kind of in a in a single line and the thing is people who've rode in the big group before probably know the moment you slow down and you're at the back of a group and the people in the front are already accelerating, you're lost when you're a bit slower than they are, a bit weaker, and you're in the back. So all the people who know they have struggles in the back of the bunch are pushing themselves in the front. I kind of uh, did so too. Here you can see the toll station. So we're passing a single line towards the right, and then everyone's just accelerating this is the Tuesday group the Tuesday group is kind of I say kind of relaxed the Thursday group is really just smashing it pushing as hard as you can going with 45 50 kilometers per hour average on the on this autopista the freeway thing and here it was kind of smooth but days before uh, it took me about two or three kilometers to to chase and reach the group again, but this specific day it was a bit easier here um I'm back with the bunch and then it's basically just about drafting as hard and as good as you can to save the most energy for when the mountains start. Then here there's a little intersection coming up, we're swaying towards the left, towards the right there's a place called Chia and Sipakira coming up, but we're not going there, we're going all the way to the north, so we have to head over this little bridge, which is a just a tiny, tiny hill, but still, every tiny hill that you know, you have to take at speeds at 30, 35 kilometers per hour uh, can pose a little difficulty but yeah now it's actually daylight it's a pretty cloudy day even though it didn't rain it looks pretty sad but yeah going up this hill pretty smooth just sucking wheels and then going back down again So in the Autobahn, the basic skill, as I just said, really is drafting. You would want to save as much energy as possible. I've really improved my drafting skills only within a month. This guy is swaying to the right, so he's probably going to have a drink or a snack or something. So you have to move up. 
Here I'm in the second row, which is probably not the best place to save the most energy, but I just stayed here for the sake of recording it for you guys. And yeah, just sucking the wheel. You can't really see how close I am, but pretty close to save as much energy as possible. About some 30 kilometers in, we're leaving the autopista and turning to the right um, into a village called Sopo, which is in the north of Bogota, and this is where we basically turn around and head back towards Bogota, but not on the highway. We're going from village to village. You can see the it's a it's a single single lane road, and you really have to keep up. Guys are accelerating, and you can't leave a gap. You really have to keep up with them. So we're going back to Bogota, and on this tour, after about 50, 55 kilometers, this is where the the mountains start. There's only some seven, eight hundred meters in positive elevation gate, but it's it's still, you know, it's not nothing. But um, at the moment, after one month of um, doing this tour, I'm able to keep up with the guys until the mountains start. And this specific day was actually when I've done a new personal record and I managed to get onto the fourth place of the women's leaderboard on Strava. So I'm very, very proud of that because um, only last year I've done this specific tour 45 minutes uh, slower. But, you know, just by going going in the group, uh, you're always going to be faster. You can draft. They motivate you. You have the adrenaline in your blood, so you're automatically going faster. Here, I just, you know, didn't pay attention, and they all kind of passed me. It's just, it just happens like that. You really have to pay attention all the time. But with this guy, the Pinarello guy, with him, I actually, and another guy, I finished all the way to the end. I don't know if they've stayed with me on purpose, but they really paced me well all the way until the, the end of the tour. So it was the first time I did not finish on my own, but I finished with them. And as I said, I'm very proud of that because they're all guys. They have all lots of more experiences. You know, men are typically stronger than women. So here we go. You can see... A uh, guy in the neon is my boyfriend, guy in the black who's out of the saddle at the moment is one of my high-carb vegan cyclist friends, and here we're still going on the flats, but the first hill is about to come up, and typically the group splits in two on the first hill because the guys are just going after the hill so fast that some get left behind. Here we go. As you can see, people are accelerating, pushing themselves towards the front. I'm out of the saddle. You can see the camera shaking. People are passing me. They're obviously faster than I am, but but I'm pushing hard so I don't get left behind. Then here's the whole thing from the back. You can really see how many people we actually are taking up the whole street. People are passing by us on the other side of the road, which is fine. Cars really do pay attention here. It looks massive. We're so many people. And really, guys, this happens every Tuesday and Thursday at 5.20 a.m. in Bogota. It's awesome. Okay, back on a little descent. The vegan friend to the left. Going down, shaking out the legs a bit. Still trying to keep up with the group. Also, don't just let them roll away on the descent or over the speed bumps. You know, people slow down before the speed bump, go over it, and then just speed up like crazy. And then maybe you get left behind. So really have to pay attention, stay focused the whole time. That's why group rides are so amazing. They train so many different skills. Not just your focus, not just your power, intensity, but so many like bike handling skills. And I recommend you to only join a group ride as big as this when you really feel comfortable on the bike because it really sucks when you have a bunch of experienced people and then there's this one person who's just like going from left to right, from right to left, up and down, cross and over not showing or, you know, pointing out any potholes to the people behind. So you should really have some manners as well when riding in a big bunch. 
Now here we're coming to a next intersection. To the left, you can go to a village called Guasca. Um, some people are about to leave the group because there's another um, three or four or five something kilometer climb. So they're going there and the others are continuing. The next up, there's a tiny hill, but it's well inclined and, you know, going with 30 kilometers per hour over a hill is, is quite a thing to do. So here we're climbing, you can't really see it, but I'm trying to stay close with high cadence, pushing myself up the mountains. You can see some people uh, get left behind, some are accelerating, some are faster, some are slower. There's really a whole lot of different uh, levels, experience levels, fitness levels, age groups. This is a very, very diverse group. But yeah, kind of managed to keep up, moved myself a bit to the back of the bunch, but that's fine because after that there's a descent and I'm typically quite fast on the descents because of my fast bike. Here's the whole thing again from behind. So you can see some other people's faces suffering. So now we're already on the descent, trying to push myself in the front again, because this is the second group. It, it got split after this tiny hill. And now I'm just moving myself forward to go a bit further with the first group. You can see them up there in the front and there is another toll station coming up so that's where people typically slow down so it's a very very tactically good move to speed up to reach the group again. There they are going all the way on the other roadside of the toll station which is fine when the group's big enough and no cars are coming from the other side but here flying over those speed bumps and almost, 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 almost back with the bunch. Getting closer. And back with them. Finding a wheel, drafting. So you can see here it's pretty much flat. And due to this, my average speed on this specific day when I did my personal record and the fourth place on the Strava leaderboard for women was um, 33 kilometers per hour. Um, I started out last year, August, on this specific segment with 24 kilometers per hour average on a group ride. So I have improved by almost 10 kilometers per hour. And I'm not going to stop. I still need to improve some to maybe be able to move myself up a bit further on the leaderboard. And now this is the last shot. The boyfriend is next to me. He's just telling me that he's going to race with the fastest guys of the group. And I'm just going my pace. So that day he, I think, finished first or second or something. And I, as I told you, finished first time, not on my own, but with two other guys from the group. So pretty proud of that. Goals for the next time will be to be actually able to keep up longer, especially when the first climbs are coming up, and to finish this round even faster. So thank you guys for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also, please comment in the comment section if you maybe want to see this whole segment as an entire video with um, the specs as an overlay so you can see the cadence, the velocity, the inclination, all this kind of stuff. Just comment below if you're interested and I'll put that up for you as soon as possible. So guys, this was the camera set up. There's one, the Garmin, and then there's another one. Just gonna show you the price. Look at this. One 